1967 Ford GT40 Mark IV. Wow, a, a piece of history here from Ford. You know, why, Tom? I mean, what what prompted you to purchase something like this? I mean, this is an amazing. The history of this this Mark. Yeah, well, I walked, uh, well, first of all, I saw a J6 at, okay. the, at the, which is the winning car, owned by Ford Motor Company, and I was at Deerfield Village, you know, at the museum, okay. and I walked in, and it's sitting up on about a two-foot riser, yeah. right as you walk in the front door, you know, it just and I, I mean, it just blew you away, I mean, uh, I mean, it had been print sitting on the ground, it probably would have still knocked me over, but this, it was high enough that you just can't miss this thing. And so anyway, little did I know, but about maybe five or six years later at the Monterey Historics, they have all those auctions yep. up there. There you are. Here it was. I mean, and, and uh, you know, it went for what I thought the damn thing was worth, if not less, and <laughs> I bought it. This, this is J11, okay. which means that it, it, ha it didn't race at Le Mans, but it was the chassis, according to the Shelby Registry, was registered for the event. Had they needed the chassis, they would have put it together. There's a but backup it, car. For yeah, it, it, the chassis was there, but actually registered and had something happen to one of the other cars in practice, they would have completed this car. It actually wasn't completed until 1980 by George Soffer, uh, of he's in Wisconsin. And okay. it moved around. Brian Angelus owned the car and one thing and the next. But, I mean, it is absolutely per period correct. I mean, I, I've had the luxury of, of having the engine cover and a lot of things off of J6 at the Monterey Historics because in 1988, Ford was the marquee. 1985, I'm sorry. No, that, that isn't even correct. Um, it was about the year 2000. Ford was the marquee at the uh, uh, Monterey, Monterey Historics. And the reason I mentioned 1988 is they brought J6 to the event. Oh, okay. And it has not run since 19, um, until from that year. And so they wanted Dan Gurney to drive around the track in a GT40 Mark IV. So they borrowed this one because it ran. <laughs> um, did Gurney I, fit in this <laughs> thing without the Gurney yeah, no, no, he did, he, he, quite honestly. And you know, that's one thing that'll never happen to this car. You know, it'll never have the bubble <laughs> while I own it, because yeah. that'd be sacrilegious. <laughs> um, it was painted like this when I got it. I've repainted it and uh, left it the same color, although it doesn't have number one on it, which that car did. This has number four in it. And being J11, I've also thought about taking the four off and make it 11, you know, so it's more. But it's, it's the, it's the um, 427, Tunnel, aluminum head, tunnel port, side oiler, the absolute correct engine is in the car. Um, the correct transaxle is in the car, made wow. by CarCraft. Um, and I raced it this year at California Speedway and just recently took it up to uh, Kirkland, Washington for a Concours and finished, ended up finishing third. There, were, there was uh, another um, G GT40 Mark II there that had all kinds of history from the, from the uh, Larry Miller collection that ended up winning the winning the uh, the competition, but uh, it's a beautiful car to have. It's really not a fun car to race because it's so big and heavy. Yep. When they pushed this, the the original car out to the starting line at Le Mans in '67, John Collins was one of the chief mechanics. He since passed away, but he was here in Santa Ana. Okay. And he mm -hmm. said that this thing weighed 3,500 pounds. 3,500 pounds when they rolled it out to the start finish line, full of fuel, oil, and water, and the driver. Wow. Um, one of my one of my biggest accomplishments in this car is oh probably 10 years ago at at, at Daytona, I had it there. I started 12th and finished third. I remember that I was at yeah. Daytona when you did. Yeah, that. and ended up on the podium with the likes of Bobby Rahal, who won the race, and. Uh, I really felt good about that, uh, the fact that I hustled it along and did a pretty good job with the car. But it's an eye catcher. Everybody loves to see it, and I love to have it and love to drive it. So. Well, it's, it's, Americana sport, it's American sports car racing at its finest in that period of time when Ford was competing against Ferrari. Again, another fine example in the Tom Malloy collection here. Yeah, thrilled to have it. Thank you.